Hi, I'm John Polk, Kevin Negro. And I'm John Sexton. John, you were just saying something about the importance of the unexpected. Well, as we've spoken uh, in the earlier segments about the magic of the image, I think that whether it's a conversation like we're having, mm. where we plan to talk about various aspects of photography and share that with your viewers, I think that oftentimes the most interesting comments and the same thing transposes to photography, the most interesting images are the unexpected things. It's one of the things I've found to be the most consistent in all the conversations I have with photographers like yourself is that the images that surprise the artist are often the ones that people react to the most mm -hmm. and lead to the greatest evolution of that artist's voice, often new breakthroughs, new directions. Uh, I think it's fascinating that we, we should always be on the lookout for those surprises. Now the question is, how do we put ourselves in a state to be surprised? Well, that's, that's, that's the difficult thing. I think that the, the first thing is, is obvious, but often the obvious is overlooked. Huh. We need to be working. <laughs> if, 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 we're, if we're sitting thinking, I don't think we're going to be able to intellectually find ourselves in an unexpected destination. As well, much could, as we could try. I could be surprised, but it would never get done on paper. Oh, right, right. <laughs> uh, I mean, most of the best ideas that I get are in the shower. Hmm. Maybe I should bring uh, <laughs> a camera, camera in the shower. shower. It wouldn't be a pretty <laughs> picture, I could tell you. It would be surprising. <laughs> it would be. It would be. Uh, maybe I should try it. But uh, I think if you're out there working and you're enjoying the process, I find I do a lot better work if I'm playing. Mm. And that doesn't mean I'm not working hard, but when, when I began doing photography, I suspect when you began doing photography, when most people viewing this began doing photography, they found it an incredibly enjoyable and rewarding experience. Absolutely. And sometimes when we become serious, we want to, we're going to make art, we're going to improve our images, then we lose that naive joy. Technique, and, is, technique is be gets better, scene gets worse sometimes. Well, or feeling. Absolutely. Uh, and and you, you, you kind of get in competition with yourself. Mm -hmm. You think, I should do better today than I did a year ago today? Uh -huh. Well, maybe a year ago today was a very special day. And uh, uh, I think that that is, is generally a downward spiral. I just, out of a glance, and it's not set up this way for the video, this photograph right here. Most of my images don't have a person in them. Mm. That's my choice. That's an, uh, an intellectual choice. Yeah. This photograph I set up to make, exactly as you see it there, but without the person, they were body surfing and I didn't notice it. Mm. So I like to make two identical exposures. I turned the film holder over, getting ready to make the second backup exposure, and this person had body surfed their way in, just north of Santa Cruz, and uh, they stood up to turn around, and I looked at this, and I just pressed the button for a one-second exposure. The only time I ever made a print of the one that I thought was the good photograph, mm -hmm. the one I tried to make, was the contact sheet. Mm -hmm. Both pieces of film are sitting on the same contact eight by eight sheet of paper. This is the better photograph, far beyond my control. Yeah. Uh, it was nothing but a gift. I'm sure you've encountered uh, a few people, and I've encountered a few people over the years, that somehow consider themselves God's gift to photography. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. It, no comment. Okay. <laughs> There's only a few of them, but I haven't met a photographer whose work I really respect, who really uh, has work that I think is significant, that has inspired me, that I have great admiration for what they've done. When you have a chance to talk to that person where they don't say that when they're making a good photograph, everything has to come into place, has to be there, and then you need good fortune on your side. Mm -hmm. Call it luck, call it the stars aligning, call it whatever you want. But something outside of your control is going to have an influence on that photograph. And because uh, sometimes you do seemingly do everything right. You look at the negative, you look at the, there's nothing wrong with it, but there's certainly nothing magic about it. Hmm. And I think that's what we're all pursuing uh, with photography. We're working with a magical medium. We're working with a medium that someone can say a picture is bigger than life. Mm -hmm. I've heard him say that about Ansel Adams' photographs. His most common print size is 16 by 20. The mountains in his photographs are a lot, a lot bigger, bigger than right? 16 inches. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the illusion that photography can create. Mm -hmm. People say photographs have depth. That's measured with a micrometer. <laughs> the illusionary depth 
You can walk for miles in some images. You can fly in some images. You can, uh, you can have an image bring tears to your eyes, and it's just a piece of paper. So there has to be magic. And I think that's what the process of making photographs is getting all of the techniques so it's intuitive, working because it won't arrive in the mail, looking for that unexpected occurrence, mm -hmm. that unanticipated piece of good fortune, and then being ready to have the luck to catch it. Well, thank you for sharing your magic with us. My pleasure.